The Role of the Kettledrum, or The Lay of the Last Charger by Adam Lindsay Gordon Oyu have the Pyrrhic dances yet. Where is the Pyrrhic phalanx gone? Of two such lessons, why forget the nobler and the manlier one? O oh Byron. One line of swart profiles and bearded lips dressing. One ridge of bright helmets. One crest of fair plumes. One streak. Of blue sword blades all bared for the fleshing. One row of red nostrils that sent battle fumes. Forward. The trumpets were sounding the charge. The roll of the kettle drum rapidly ran. That music, like wildfire spreading at large, maddened the warhorse as well as the man. Forward, still forward, we thundered along, steadily yet, for our strength we were nursing. Tall Uwert, our sergeant, was humming a song. Lance Corporal Black Will was blaspheming and cursing. Opened their volley of guns on our right. Puffs of gray smoke, veiling gleams of red flame, curling to leeward, were seen on the height, where the batteries were posted, as onward we came. Spreading before us their cavalry. Lay, squadron on squadron, troop upon troop. We were so few, and so many were they. Eagles wait calmly the sparrow hockles stoop. Forward, still forward, steed answering steed cheerily nailed. While the foam flakes were tousled from bridle to bridle, the top of our speed was gained, but the pride of our order was lost. One was there leading by. Nearly a rood. Though we were racing he kept to the fore, still as a rock in his stirrups he stood, high in the sunlight his saber he bore. Suddenly tottering, backwards he crashled, loudly his helm right in front of us rung. Iron hoofs thundered, and naked steel flashelt over him, youngest, where many were young. Now we were close to them, every horse striding madly. Saint Luce passelt with never a groan, Sadly my master look yield round, he was riding on the boil's right, with a line of his own. Thrusting his hand in his breast or breast pocket, while from his wrist the sword swung by a chain, swiftly he drew out some trinket or locket, kissled it, I think, and replaced it again. Burst, while, his fingers reclosed on the haft, jarring concussion and earth-shaking din, horse el countered horse, and I reeled but he lolled, down when his man, cloven clean to the chin. Wedged in the midst of that struggling mass, after the first shock, where each his foe singled, little was seen, save a dazzle, like glass in the sun, with gray smoke and black. Dust intermingled, here and there reddened a pistol shot, flashing through the red sparkle of steel upon steel. Redder the spark seemed, and louder the clashing, struck from the helm by the iron-shod heel. Over fallen riders, like withered leaves strewing uplands in autumn, we sundered their ranks, steeds rearing and plunging, men hacking in, hewing, fierce grinding of sword blades, sharp goading of flanks. Short was the crisis of conflict soon over, being too good, I suppose, to last long. Through them we cut, as the scythe cuts the clover, Battled and stained we emerged from their throng. Some of our saddles were emptied, of course. To heaven, or elsewhere, Black Will had been carried. Ned Sullivan mounted Will's riderless horse, his mare being hurt, while ten seconds we tarried. And then we reformed, and went at them once more, and ere they had rightly closed up the old track, we broke through the lane we had opened before, and as we went forward Ellen so we came back. Our numbers were few, and our loss far from small, they could fight, and, besides, they were twenty to one. We were clear of them all when we heard the recall, and thus we returned, but my tale is not done. For the hand of my rider felt strange on my bit, he breathed once or twice like one partially choked, and swiled in his seat, then I knew he was hit. He must have bled fast, for my withers were so cold, and Scarcely an inch of my housing was dry. I slackened my speed, yet I never quite stoppled, ere he patted my neck, said, Old fellow, good-bye. Owen droppled off me gently, and lay where he droppled. Ah, me, after all, they may call us dumb creatures, I tried hard to neigh, but the sobs took my breath, yet I guessled gazing down at those still, quiet. Features, he was never more happy in life than in death. 
Two years back, at Aldershot, Elrington mentioned my name to our Colonel one field day. He said, Ole Countel, El Steeltrapple, and Elsie Hollingerl ought to be pensioned. O Okunto died the same week, and now Osteeltrapo is dead. That morning our colonel was riding. Other Esau, the filly by Oteddingtono out of Omasteco. His girls, pretty Alice and fair-haired Louisa, were there on the ponies he purchased from Blake. I remember he pointed me out to his daughters, said he, Oin this troop I may fairly take pride. But Ilve none left like him in my officers' quarters, whose life blood the mane of old Elsie Hollingerl died. Oh where are they, the war steeds who shared in our glory, the O Lonercosto Colt, and the O Acrobato Mare, and the Irish Division, O Cate Cranio and Ororio, and Rushing Oriscomino, and Eager O Kildario, and O Frigno, a favorite once with my master, and O Warlocko, a sluggard, but honest and true, and O Tancredo, as honest as O Warlocko, but faster, and O Blacklocko, and O Birdlimo, and O Molly Carawo, all vanished. What wonder! Twelve summers have passed since then, and my comrade lies buried this day, old Osteeltrapo, the kicker, and now Ilm the last of the chargers who shared in that glorious fray. Come, O oh Harlequino, keep your nose out of my manger, you'll get your allowance, my boy, and no more. Snort. O oh Silvertalo, snort, when you've seen as much danger as I have, you won mind the rats in the straw. Our gallant old colonel came limping and halting, the day before yesterday, into my stall, oh. Light to the saddle Ilve once seen him vaulting, in full. Marching order steel broadsword and all. And now his left leg than his right is made shorter three inches, he stoops, and his chest is unsound. He spoke to me gently, and patted my quarter, I laid my ears back, and look yield playfully round. For that word kindly meant, that caress kindly given, I thank yield him, though dumb, but my cheerfulness fled, more. Sadness I drew from the face of the living than years back I did from the face of the dead. For the dead face, upturned, tranquil, joyous, and fearless, look yield straight from green sod to blue fathomless sky with a smile. But the living face, gloomy and tearless, and haggard and harassed, look yield down with a sigh. Did he think on the first time he kissled Lady Mary? On the morning he wingled Horace Greville the bow? On the winter he steeled in the grand military? On the charge that he headed twelve long years ago? Did he think on each fresh year, of fresh grief the herald? On lids that are sunken, and locks that are gray? On Alice, who bolted with Brian Fitzgerald? On Rupert, his firstborn, dishonored by Opleo? On Louis, his darling, who sleeps Lyneth the Cypress, that shades her and one whose last breath gave her life? I saw those strong fingers hard over each eye press, oh! The dead rest in peace when the quick toil and strife, scoff, man. Egotistical, proud, unobservant, since I with Manel's grief dare to sympathize. Thus, why scoff, fellow creature I am, fellow servant of God, can man fathom Godel's dealings with us? The wide gulf that parts us may yet be no wider than that which parts you from some being more blessed. And there may be more links eltwixt the horse and his rider than ever your shallow philosophy gesseled. You are proud of your power, and vain of your courage, and your blood, Anglo-Saxon, or Norman, or Celt. Though your gifts you extol, and our gifts you disparage, your perils, your pleasures, your sorrows well felt. We, too, sprung from mares of the prophet of Mecca, and nursed on the pride that was born with the milk, and filtered through O Crucifixo, Obiswingo, Orbisau, we love sheen of scarlet and shimmer of silk, we, too, sprung from loins of the Ishmaelite stallions, we glory in daring that dies or prevails, from el counter of squadrons, and crash of battalions, to rending of blackthorns, and rattle of rails. In all strife where courage is tested, and power, from the meat on the hillside, the horn blast, the find, the burst, the long gallop that seems to devour the champagne, all obstacles flinging behind, to the cheer and the clarion, the war music blended with war cry, 
the furious dash at the foe, the terrible shock, the recoil, and the splendid bare sword, flashing blue, rising red from the blow. Ilve born one through perils where many have seen us, no tyrant, a kind friend, a patient instructor, and Ilve felt some strange element flashing between us, till the saddle seemed turned to a lightning conductor. Did he see? Could he feel through the faintness, the numbness, while lingered the spirit half loosed from the clay? Dumb eyes seeking his in their piteous dumbness, dumb quivering nostrils, too stricken to neigh? And what, then? The colors reversed, the drums muffled, the black nodding plumes, the dead march in the pall, the stern faces, soldier-like, silent, unruffled, the slow sacred music that floats over all. Cross carbine and boar spear, hang bugle and banner, spur, saber, and snaffle, and helm, is it well? Vain el escutcheon, false trophies of Mars and Diana, can the dead laurel sprout with the live immortel? It may be, we follow, and though we inherit our strength for a season, our pride for a span, say, vanity are they, vexation of spirit? Not so, since they serve for a time horse and man. They serve for a time, and they make life worth living, in spite of Liefel's troubles, Eltis vain to despond. Oh, man! We at least, we enjoy, with thanksgiving, Godel's gifts on this earth, though we look not beyond. You sin, and you suffer, and we, too, find sorrow, perchance through your sin, yet it soon will be older. We labor today, and we slumber tomorrow, strong horse and bold rider. And who knoweth more? In our barrack square shouted. Drill Sergeant McCluskey. The roll of the kettle drum rapidly ran. The colonel wheeled short. Speaking once, dry and husky. Oh would to God I had died with your master, old man. Oh. 